it's no secret and I'm sure no surprise to hear that we live in a world that is awash with lies. The internet is full of fake news, actual fake news, things merely invented for clickbait. And we have a president who declares that anything that he doesn't like is fake news because it's true. And that self-same president is now up to an average of something like 15 lies a day. And I recently read that an increasing number of people believe that the Earth is flat. So how do you live in a world that is so full of lies? How do we manage? Because the reality is that lies make you crazy. And by that I mean that lies divorce you from reality. They tell you that what you know, what you experience, is not true, and then you have no way of judging what's real, what's not real, how does my experience belong in the world, and you're set adrift in some gray land between fact and fiction. Whether you are lied to or whether you are the one who tells the lies, lies always put you at a distance from reality, which is to say they are a form of insanity. And lies on the national scale lead to vastly destructive decisions, decisions that deny the reality of climate change or deny the humanity of people who are migrants. But it's also true that lies on a personal scale, lies from friends or family, from loved ones, are even more devastating. Because intimacy is founded in truth. That's one way of defining intimacy, is as the truths that we are able to tell one another. The more we're able to be authentic, to be self-revealing, the more we can trust one another with the realities of our lives, the more intimate we are. And so when someone you are in relationship with lies to you, intimacy is shattered, it has no basis. Trust is broken and you don't know what is intimate, what is true, what is held between you. I would dare to say that lying is in and of itself and basically always a destructive force. Now I know there are arguments for lies of politeness or lies to help people and that's probably true but I'm just gonna say it. Lies are destructive because they take people away from reality and we can't connect and we can't choose unless we can be in that place of trusting that we know what we know, that we see what we see, that our experience is real. It matters that we tell the truth and even if people who we like are not telling the truth, if they're not telling the truth in service of aims that we feel are noble and good, it's still destructive. It matters that we tell the truth. So how do we do that? How do we bring truth into a world that's so full of lies? The best answer I have comes in Unitarian Universalism's fourth principle, the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. And I like the fact that it says that the search is free, that we are unconstrained in examining what we see, what we know, what we feel, what we believe. And I love that it is responsible, that we can't just assume things are true because we want them to be true, and we can't ignore the experience of others, and we have to pay attention to what the effects are of what we hold as true on others. 
I love those things, but mostly what I love is the word search because it reminds me that truth isn't just a thing that happens, something that you know and you hold on to and you have it for all time. Truth is a process. It's a quest. I have to say that I think of the search for truth and meaning as being something like King Pellinore. Now, you may not remember or have heard of King Pellinore, but he's a character in T.H. White's children's book, The Once and Future King, which is mostly about Merlin and Arthur, King Arthur. But it features this rather bumbling guy, King Pellinore, who lives his life in search of the questing beast. He is on a quest for the questing beast, and what he does is trample through forests and across rivers and over hill and dale in search of this questing beast, which is always just out of reach. And I think the search for truth is something like that. Like the beast, it leaves signs behind. There are things to follow. There are facts and figures and knowledge but the entirety of the truth is always just somewhere out of our reach. But it matters that we are tracking it. It matters that we're committed to the quest. It matters that our lives are spent following the trail of truth, of what is real. It's a process, and it isn't an easy process, and it isn't a process that you're ever done with. And there are ways that you can know when you are right, and there are ways that you will never know if you're right. And so truth-seeking takes courage. It takes commitment and a willingness to put in the effort to know, but it also takes the courage to unlearn things that are not true. And so truth-seeking also requires humility. Because the reality is that all of us know things that are not truth. We operate from within a particular point of view in the world, and for many of us that's the particular point of view of someone who belongs to one or another class of oppressor. People who have benefited from a variety of cultural lies that have been told about who matters, about whose story is true, about whose story is even told. And so the quest for truth requires the humility to set aside some of the things that we know and to listen, because the fact of the matter is that our truths are not complete. None of our truths are complete, but there are people whose stories are part of true, are part of reality. And the more we can listen, the more we listen for truth, the closer we come. The quest for truth is less a quest to speak the truth, to have the truth, to know the truth, and proclaim the truth, than it is a quest to hear the truth, to be aware that there is more out there than you know, and there are things out there that are directly contradictory to what you know. And so only when we have the commitment to listen as well as speak, to hold hard to the truth as we find it, and to hold lightly to the truth as we assume it, only then do we actually catch glimpses of that fantastical beast, the truth. That fantastical beast that it is worth committing our lives to following.